Calcium supplements are one of the most controversial supplements out there. They're often recommended for osteoporosis and bone health, but there are also studies linking them to an increased risk of heart attacks and arterial plaque. This obviously has a lot of people worried. So in this video, I'll explain what exactly is going on and if you should take calcium supplements or not. Okay. So the risk tied to calcium supplements really comes down to tissue calcification. Normally, calcium should be in your bones and teeth. That's where over 90% of it belongs. The small remaining amounts are found in your muscles, nerves, and blood, where it helps with things like muscle contraction and keeping your heartbeat regular. But here's the problem. Calcium doesn't always stay where it belongs. Over time, some of it can build up in soft tissues. This is called calcification. For example, when calcification happens in your arteries, calcium combines with fats, cholesterol, and other dead cells to form arterial plaque. These plaques make your blood vessels stiff and narrow, which raises your risk of heart attacks and strokes. Studies have shown that a huge percentage of older people have calcium deposits in their arteries. So for example, about 90% of men and 67% of women over the age of 70 show definite signs of arterial calcification. But it's not just an old person's problem. A lot of people show signs related to tissue calcification at a younger age, but it just often goes unnoticed because it's so difficult to measure. So calcification is definitely a real thing, and it's very strongly linked to cardiovascular disease. The question is, do calcium supplements make this worse? Let's think about what happens when you swallow a calcium pill. The supplement dissolves in your stomach and then calcium ions are absorbed in your intestines, after which they travel through your bloodstream. Ideally, your body should then send that calcium to your bones. But if your calcium metabolism isn't working properly, much of it may not end up there. Instead, it can linger in your blood or settle in tissues like your arteries. And there is research to support this. A 2021 meta-analysis found that the use of calcium supplements was significantly associated with the increased risk of cardiovascular disease and congenital heart disease by 15%, specifically in postmenopausal women. An earlier study from 2012 also found that calcium supplements with or without vitamin D modestly increased the risk of cardiovascular events, especially myocardial infection, so heart attacks. But there are also studies that didn't find this relationship. For example, a 2019 population-based study of more than 130,000 people didn't find a connection between calcium supplements and higher heart attack risk. So what gives and how do we interpret this contradicting data? What you have to understand and what clears up a lot of confusion around this is that the real issue isn't simply too much calcium or not enough calcium. It's calcium bioavailability. Bioavailability means how much of the calcium in your diet or in your supplements your body can actually use properly. You can have two people taking the exact same calcium supplement. For one person, it all goes into the bones, making them stronger. For another, it ends up in soft tissue and arteries, causing problems. The difference lies in how their body handles the calcium. Many people actually have a strange mix of both calcium deficiency and calcium access at the same time. They're deficient in usable calcium where it matters, so in the bones, but overloaded with unusable calcium in the wrong places, like your soft tissue and arteries. That's why just throwing more calcium into the system doesn't solve the problem. The next question then is obviously, what determines calcium bioavailability? Well, it's not just about the calcium itself. Calcium metabolism depends on a whole network of other nutrients and cofactors that help with digestion, absorption, transport, and storage. If you're missing any of these, then calcium can go off track. For digestion, you need enough stomach acid, which depends on nutrients like zinc and B vitamins. For absorption in the intestines, you need vitamin D. Then for transport through the blood, calcium needs to be bound to proteins and kept dissolved and out of cells. That's where magnesium and vitamin K2 come into play. And then also other electrolytes like sodium and potassium. Magnesium is especially important because it balances calcium inside your cells. Without enough magnesium, calcium can build up and overstimulate cells and even cause cell death over time. Vitamin K2 is another very big player. It directs calcium away from arteries and into bones. And strong adrenal glands help keep sodium and potassium levels balanced. This then helps keep a healthy ratio between your big four electrolytes. 
So sodium and calcium mostly outside your cells and magnesium and potassium mostly inside. Other cofactors would include vitamin A, boron, and even proteins like osteocalcin, which help mineralize bones. Without these, calcium can drift into the wrong places where it doesn't belong. What that means is that answering the question of whether calcium supplements lead to tissue calcification depends entirely on your calcium metabolism and how well your body can keep it in the right places. This is also why measuring this correlation is so difficult in studies, because you don't know someone's calcium metabolism if all you do is give them a supplement and then wait for a few years to see if they develop heart problems. Online, a lot of people will tell you to avoid all calcium supplements and that it is a terrible nutrient that we all need less of. But that kind of misses the point. The practical answer really isn't never take calcium or always take calcium, but fix the calcium system first. I have several videos on how to do this that I will link in the description, but here are the cliff notes. You want to start with digestion. If you don't dissolve and absorb calcium, nothing else matters. Make sure you're eating enough protein to support stomach acid production and get the basics for hydrochloric acid. So zinc and B vitamins, especially B6. Simple habits can also help like chewing well and eating in a calm environment. There are also other things to improve your stomach acid levels, but those are the basics. Once digestion works, whatever calcium you take has a good shot at being used. Next, you want to go easy on vitamin D. It boosts intestinal calcium uptake, which is great if the rest of your system is ready, but it can overshoot if you're low on magnesium or K2. Again, the goal isn't to force calcium in, it's to enable its healthy handling. When it comes to magnesium, most people will do well on a dose from around 300 to 450 milligrams per day that is divided into several doses. And then also add K2, like I said before, you want to think of it as a traffic control. It tells calcium to go towards your bones and away from your arteries. You can get it from aged cheeses, natto, and pasteurized dairy, but most people will have to supplement. And again, also mind your other electrolytes. And here, you always want to start with the big four. So calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Most people don't get enough potassium, which means you will need to eat more cooked vegetables. And the sodium-potassium balance is also governed by your adrenal hormone, aldosterone. So make sure to support your adrenals as well. And then don't forget the other important cofactors like boron or vitamin A, which helps balance vitamin D and vitamin K2 and also supports the proteins that bind calcium. And lastly, you also want to train your skeleton. So bones ask for calcium when you load them. This can include things like walking, lifting weights, jumping, or any safe impact work that tells your body to park calcium in the right places. No supplement can replace that signal. Now I know this is a lot of information, but keep in mind that not every nutrient that I just named has to be supplemented. It's more about knowing what drives calcium balance and how to achieve it naturally. When you understand this, you will know that the answer to the question if calcium supplements are dangerous is really that it depends. If you just pop high-dose calcium pills without addressing bioavailability, then yes, they can definitely add to tissue calcification. But if you balance them with the right cofactors and keep your metabolism working properly, then calcium supplements can be safe and are sometimes needed. So the takeaway is that calcium itself is not the enemy. The danger comes from calcium that your body cannot use properly. Before I wrap up this lesson, let me remind you to check out the video description for the related videos on calcium that I mentioned before. I will also link my favorite mineral test to test your calcium levels and my recovery program if you want to rebalance your nutrients and electrolytes correctly. Again, for more info, just open the description. It will all be listed there.